Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the PET Virtual Open House. I am Tanya Alvarez, Principal at Pierre Elliott Trudeau Elementary School. Thank you for joining us tonight. Now, how this virtual open house will work is that I'll speak to you about how amazing our school is, and you'll have the chance to virtually meet some of our incredible staff, students, and parents. You will also see some amazing videos of our students and hear their testimonials. Un grand merci à Monsieur Patré, notre professeur de français de sixième année, qui a monté ces vidéos. Now, while you're watching this open house, if you have any questions at any time, please write them in the chat. We will try to answer as many questions as possible. Now, let's start your journey on why choosing Pierre Elliott Trudeau as your child's school is the best decision for you. Why is choosing Pierre Elliott Trudeau as your child's elementary school the best decision for you? PET is a bilingual school that focuses on the individual needs and eases your child's transition into elementary school. We have students starting in pre-K, age four to grade six. PET provides a safe environment where students have a sense of belonging and feel safe and secure to learn. Our PET staff focuses on a love for their students and a desire to see them grow both academically and socially. PET is your home. PET is a STEAM school. STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. Students will have the opportunity to work on areas of the curriculum through STEAM challenges that stimulate their creativity and imagination while working through the design process. The skills learned with the STEAM program will make students ready for jobs that do not exist in the 21st century world. PT students are our future leaders. We foster an open-minded culture and are accepting of all individuals. PT challenges your child in more ways than one, through academics, athletics, and becoming active, compassionate, and lifelong members in the community. We are committed to producing competent and confident children where learning is fun and self-esteem is the basis of a child's social, emotional, and intellectual growth. PET encourages each child to reach his or her potential. Our PET staff is supportive, dedicated, and committed. At PET, we invest in getting to know your child. We reinforce your child's strengths and help them with their challenges through teacher tutorials, after-school tutoring program, extra support staff, and resources. Your child becomes our child, and together we work for their success. PET has a base daycare and offers services before and after school every day. Our educators plan and organize activities that enrich your child's learning. At Pierre Elliott Trudeau, part of the EMSB, we prepare students to one day emerge as creative, free thinkers, contributing to the well-being of our society. We look forward to you joining our PET family. As you can see from that great video that Mr. Patrick made, you saw little bits of what our school entails. Now, there are so many great things happening at PET that I am unable to explain everything by myself. So we have a group of students, parents, and staff who will let you know that why together we make PET a stimulating, fun, and educational environment for all. And as you see that we have a dedicated and passionate staff who work together with curious and creative students. PET is a family and its success is because of the collaboration with parents. Now that you got the overview of our fantastic school, you have the opportunity to know more about our programs. You'll hear from our staff, students, and parents alike. Now, let's get started with our K5 and K4 video, pre-cycle video. Je m'appelle Madame Sandy et je suis une des enseignantes en maternelle à l'école pierre Elliott Trudeau. À cette école, nous offrons un programme bilingue. Les élèves ont deux enseignantes principales et passent une journée en anglais et l'autre en français. 
L'apprentissage des enfants est encadré par les six compétences du programme d'éducation préscolaire. Ces compétences sont développées à travers des discussions de classe qui permettent aux élèves d'augmenter leur vocabulaire et la confiance en soi. Des jeux structurés qui aident à travailler la motricité, les sons des lettres, les nombres et la prélecture. Des jeux libres qui contribuent à leur milieu social, intellectuel et émotionnel. Et bien sûr, des activités amusantes pour travailler les divers concepts et thèmes appris pendant l'année. Hello, my name is Barry Caroni. I am a bilingual preschool teacher for four-year-olds at Pierre Elliott Trudeau Elementary School. There are the three K-4 groups here at PT. The teachers teach one group of students, both English and French, on alternate days. At PT, we follow the Quebec Preschool Program for four-year-olds, which aims to facilitate the global development of the child. Our mandate is to provide all children with equal opportunities, to ensure that they develop in all areas, and above all else, to instill a love of learning. It is the foundation needed to acquire the attitudes, strategies, behaviors, and processes they need in order to prepare them for the rest of their schooling. Playtime serves as an important role in the preschool program. When children play, they learn to be autonomous. They also acquire valuable skills, which include social, emotional, cognitive, and physical development. Furthermore, the children get to explore areas that interest them. They are given two 45 to 60 minute periods of four indoor play every day. One period is teacher guided activities in various centers, and the second is a free play period where the children get to make choices and decisions. They also enjoy three daily 20 minute outdoor play sessions. Because the students are in a school setting, they are given daily opportunities to develop positive and harmonious relationships, not only with their classroom teacher and peers, but also with members of the school community. Music and phys ed classes are integrated into the weekly schedule and are taught by specialists. Since PET is a STEAM school, we introduce the students to small STEAM-based activities through play. Young children enjoy exploring the world around them, and these activities help them to develop critical thinking, problem solving, and communication skills. Nous avons hâte de vous rencontrer, et nous vous invitons à découvrir le monde avec nous. So we're going to have now uh, one of our K, so just to let everyone know, K4, K5, K4 means preschool, uh, pre-kindergarten, and K5 is the kindergarten grade, uh, the five-year-old level. So we're going to have with us two special teachers, Madame Dina, Miss Dina, and Mr. Michael. Hi, Miss Dina. Hi, Mr. Michael. How's everybody doing tonight? How are you doing tonight, Mr. Michael? Oh, I think Mr. Michael, you might be on mute. Nope, we're good. Okay, we'll check. We'll ask Ms. Dina. Ms. Dina, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. Ms. Mike, Mr. Michael, you're back with us? Oh, okay, that's okay. Not to worry. So, je vais poser la question à Madame Dina. Madame Dina, à quoi ressemble la journée à la maternelle? Okay, um... À quoi ressemble la journée à la maternelle? C'est une très bonne question. Eh bien, euh, je pense que la meilleure façon de vous décrire euh, qu'est-ce qui se passe en maternelle, euh, la maternelle pour les cinq, euh, pour les cinq ans, c'est je vais vous dire euh, qu'est-ce que euh, j'ai fait avec euh, mes petits cocos aujourd'hui. Euh, aujourd'hui, c'était une journée en français. Donc, euh, les élèves ont parlé en, toute la journée, on a pratiqué le français. À 7h25, la, la première cloche a sonné, tous les élèves sont entrés dans, dans l'école, euh, les élèves sont tous euh, déshabillés, ils ont mis, euh, ils ont leur propre casier, ils ont mis leurs affaires euh, dans leur casier. Euh, dans ma classe, ils ont mis leur agenda dans notre panier de classe. Tout est bien organisé euh, maintenant, rendu au mois de janvier. Oh, la routine, ils la connaissent très, très bien. Euh, J'étais très contente parce que Sophie a porté ses deux livres de bibliothèque et elle, elle était très contente aussi. Euh, euh, les élèves vont chaque, euh, chaque euh, semaine, ça dépend de, de la classe, mais mes élèves vont, euh, chaque deuxième semaine, ils vont à la bibliothèque euh, les vendredis et puis ils peuvent euh, emprunter un, 
un livre en anglais puis en français. Et puis, j'étais très contente pour Sophie parce que vu qu'elle a apporté ses livres aujourd'hui, elle peut, euh, elle va visiter la biblio euh, ce vendredi, elle va ressortir des livres. Euh, quand ils étaient tous prêts, ils sont entrés dans notre classe, ils sont allés à notre bibliothèque de la classe, ils ont partagé des livres avec des amis. Ensuite, on a commencé avec euh, nous. Euh, aujourd'hui, j'ai commencé avec une, classe, avec une activité pour développer l'intelligence émotionnelle des enfants. On a travaillé avec notre mood meter qu'on appelle, c'est quelque chose de très scientifique, mais très intéressant en même temps. C'est un outil qui les aide à exprimer et à gérer leurs émotions, ce qui est très important en, 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 pendant l'éducation préscolaire des enfants. Euh, âge 4 ans, 5 ans, 6 ans, c'est très important pour les élèves et on travaille ça. Ensuite, dans notre classe, on a fait du yoga. Euh, C'était l'heure de la causerie, on a parlé du, cal euh, du temps qu'ils faisaient dehors, du calendrier, on a chanté, bien sûr, et puis on a dansé. Tous les élèves ont, aiment danser, moi aussi. Et ensuite, c'était la récréation, c'était la première récréation, ils sont allés dehors et puis ils sont retournés après 20 minutes, leurs joues étaient rouges, euh, c'était l'heure de la collation après, et puis euh, on, on, leur offre, on offre à chaque élève de l'école un berlingot de lait chaque, chaque matin. Donc aujourd'hui, c'était pendant l'heure de, de la collation, ils ont pris euh, leur collation qu'ils ont apportée pour eux-mêmes, qui étaient dans leur euh, boîte à lin. Ils ont bu du lait s'ils voulaient du lait. Et tout de suite après, c'était une journée intéressante aujourd'hui parce qu'on a eu aussi une visite. Madame Carla est venue nous visiter. Elle est notre orthophoniste. Elle travaille dans notre école. Et puis cette année, on est vraiment, je suis tellement contente d'avoir une spécialiste comme ça dans notre classe parce qu'elle vient deux fois par mois. Et puis, elle travaille avec tous les élèves de notre classe. Et puis, elle fait des activités euh, pour développer leurs compétences phonologiques. Très important euh, pour les enfants préscolaires. Et euh, on a aussi travaillé, moi, j'ai travaillé avec eux. C'est la lettre de la semaine, c'est la lettre P. On a fait des activités, on a travaillé le, la lettre et puis les sons. Demain, probablement, euh, on va faire des ateliers. Demain, ça va être en anglais. Puis, on va faire des ateliers. Les ateliers, on travaille, euh, c'est toujours, euh, il y a toujours le rôle du jeu. C'est très important dans l'apprentissage euh, des enfants. Et puis, les enfants apprennent. Mais ils ne savent pas qu'ils apprennent parce qu'ils jouent, ils explorent, ils font des expériences. Et puis, ils découvrent des affaires seuls parfois ou peut-être avec, en, en les guide pour voir quelque chose. Peut-être que parfois, ils voient des affaires que nous, on n'a pas vues encore. C'est très intéressant. Et puis, demain, on va faire des ateliers. Euh, C'était l'heure du dîner. Madame Sandy, le, leur monitrice, euh, est venue. Et puis, ils sont sortis pour jouer dehors. Ils ont mangé leur euh, dîner dans la classe. On a aussi euh, des élèves qui ont vraiment euh, aimé leur... Euh, leur macaroni au fromage parce qu'aujourd'hui, c'était le repas chaud. Et puis, il y avait des élèves qui ont mangé ça. Il y avait des élèves qui ont aussi mangé leur propre dîner qu'ils ont porté dans leur boîte à lunch. Et bien, après, c'était l'heure de, des jeux libres. Et puis, les enfants ont joué. Ils ont choisi leur station. Puis, ils ont, on, ils ont joué avec leurs amis. Et euh, après 45 minutes, 50 minutes, eh bien, c'était la dernière réunion de la journée. Et puis, on Merci. a partagé lors de notre classe Qu'est-ce qu'ils ont fait qui leur a donné un sourire aujourd'hui? Good. OK, c'est beau, uh, Madame Dina. You gave a, a clear explanation of the entire day. So great. Oui, c'est uh, exactement so, ça. Just, une chose que tu avais dit, I'm just going to mention it. So uh, social skills, this is something that we've started this year with our behavior techs, our child care workers, behavior technicians. So they do social skills with the entire school. So they're scheduled in to every homeroom, every class, and they go in for about 15, 20 minutes, and they talk about a mood meter, which basically is a chart uh, that uh, the kids can see how they're feeling, and they place themselves on this meter, uh, and teachers can help them uh, regulate their emotions, their feelings, um, and it's something that's really good that gets the kids to internalize how they're doing and how best we can help support them in order for learning to take place. So this is something that's great, and we started in pre-K and kindergarten all the way to grade six. So, merci beaucoup, Madame Dina. Mr. Michael, 
Mr. Michael, I'm hoping we can hear you. I hope so. Do you hear me? Oh, yes, we hear you. Fabulous. Oh, Technology. Perfect. Gotta love it. So, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Michael, uh, you're a pre-K support with our uh, pre-kindergarten K-4 group. Yes. So tell me, why should a parent choose to send their pre-kindergarten child to PET instead of sending them out of daycare? All right. So uh, first and foremost, um, it's very important to, to note that in, pre, in uh, K-4, I should say, um, students really follow a regular schedule that they would really basically be following throughout their, their academic career. So they come into school, we, we begin at 735. So uh, they come in, they, we do our, our schedule and it's a, it's a very structured schedule, which is a lot different than you would find in a daycare setting. Um, we finish at 220, which is five minutes earlier than the rest of uh, the school. Uh, and the reason for that is because um, basically we want them to, we want to bring them to the buses, to, to their parents and to the care before uh, the other students uh, uh, come down and get ready to leave the school as well. So it's a good way for the, the younger ones to not be uh, in the middle of uh, the rest of all the, the other students in the school. Uh, also very important uh, to note, we do get access at our school to uh, the professional team. Uh, so you may be wondering who is the professional team? Well, uh, professional team uh, consists of the psychologists, uh, psychologist, uh, the um, uh, occupational therapist, uh, special ed consultant. And we also have our behavior technician uh, specialist at the school board as well, who we do have uh, constant contact with. Um, just as an example of what an occupational therapist uh, does in our classroom, um, she will come in and she'll uh, look at our students' uh, fine motor skills and see where things need to be uh, uh, perhaps more developed, uh, where students are at, if they're doing really well. And so we're in constant con uh, contact with them and they provide us with some really great feedback and uh, strategies to help them out. Uh, I, think, I think, Mr. Michael, you, uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned the speech and language pathologist as well. Yes, sorry, I'm about the speech and language uh, pathologist, who's yeah. uh, Miss Carla, and I believe yeah. uh, Ms. Dean had uh, spoken about that. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, she does uh, come in as well. Uh, she's fantastic. She gives yeah. us a lot of great uh, strategies as well, especially for students who are in need of, uh, you know, working on their speech uh, and uh, certain language issues that need to be addressed at that moment. Um, also, furthermore, we also have uh, some, um, we really incorporate a lot of social play in uh, K4. So what do I mean by that? In daycare, there's a lot of nap time. There's a lot of uh, downtime for the students. Whereas in K4, we really focus on having the students uh, socializing, playing together, learning through each other, learning through exploration. Um, that's such an important part of our program. Um, and we really do uh, do a lot of activities that touch a lot of the competencies that are uh, focused on. Uh, so basically the physical and the motor development of the students, the emotional development of the students, social development, right, big one, uh, language development and the cognitive development. So these are all competencies that we focus and uh, work to develop throughout the year so that they transition really well into uh, K-5, so kindergarten in the following year. And lastly, the really cool part is that they get to also be part of uh, all the um, wonderful um, extra activities that we do in the school with our specialists. So they get to uh, meet up with our, our music teacher, Madame Marianne, and they get to uh, work with our uh, phys ed teachers as well, uh, Monsieur Max and uh, Miss Patty. So this is also a wonderful addition to uh, what they would be missing in, in a regular daycare setting. So uh, it's, it's such a wonderful program and we strongly invite you uh, to take part in our K4 uh, program at PET. There's just so much to say. We don't even have all the time to say everything. Not so enough time. <laughs> not enough time. But I have to say, though, if ever you can't find me in my office, chances are that I'm probably with the kindergarten 
or pre-kindergarten students. Come on, it's come on over. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. And uh, so parents, obviously, uh, this is just a little bit of a taste of what our school has to offer for pre-kindergarten and kindergarten, uh, as Mr. Michael and Madame Dina explained to you. Um, so again, register with us. Uh, registration takes place this week for siblings and next week for everyone else. Now, we're going to show you a phenomenal music video that Madame Ariane, our music teacher, created last year with the grade five and grade six students. Enjoy. There comes a moment when my heart must stand alone on this lonely path I've chosen. Like a house that's not a home Mais quelquefois quand j'en ai assez Que je songe à tout abandonner Tu veux que je sois ce que je suis Je pense alors je fais I have to say that video brings me to tears. It's just so beautiful. Madame Marianne, you are fantastic. Uh, that was incredible. So incredible. Well, how are you, first of all? Uh, ça va bien, merci. Ça va, ça va bien? 
Parfait, oui. ça va très bien, merci. Uh, alors, I have to say that uh, that was an Oscar winning performance. So here you go. Merci. Quel honneur. Félicitations, félicitations. Alors, Madame Marianne, I'm going to speak a bit of Franglais. Um, you are the luckiest, luckiest teacher in the school because you teach every single child at Pierre Elliott Trudeau, all the way from pre-kindergarten to grade six. And from what I can see in that last video, learning can be fun. Uh, les élèves disent toujours à quel point ils aiment les cours de musique. C'est tellement amusant. Now, tell us some more about what the music program at PET looks like from pre-kindergarten all the way to grade six. Oui, effectivement, j'ai tous les élèves et c'est tout un exploit. Ce qui est vraiment cool, c'est que je peux voir la progression de chaque niveau, de faire des choses vraiment simples avec les tout-petits jusqu'à des choses qui sont vraiment beaucoup plus complexes avec les plus vieux. On voit vraiment cette progression. À partir de pré-maternelle et maternelle, je travaille beaucoup sur le développement de la voix de tête, ce qui veut dire d'explorer les aigus et les graves, de pouvoir chanter avec justesse, de travailler l'oreille et de chanter des chansons simples avec mouvement, toucher, travailler sur la pulsation et le rythme, donc le concept d'entendre de, la pulsation, ce qui est « the beat » en anglais, et de pouvoir chanter en restant sur cette pulsation. Aussi, d'explorer de, de, les instruments, de pouvoir jouer, les découvrir et d'être capable d'accompagner des pièces de musique avec ces instruments et toujours de s'exprimer. Ça fait partie, une grande partie de l'apprentissage en musique. Avec le cycle 1, on apprend à lire et à écrire la notation de base, à composer, à reconnaître des éléments spécifiques dans une pièce de musique, donc le tempo, les nuances, le style, comment ça nous fait sentir, identifier les instruments qu'on entend, apprécier des pièces de musique. Alors, pendant le temps des fêtes, on a, on a, on a écouté et a appris sur Casse-Noisette. Là, plus tard, je vais m'embarquer dans le carnaval des animaux et Pierre et le loup. Alors, vraiment de leur faire entendre des choses qu'ils n'auront peut-être jamais l'occasion d'entendre plus tard. Aussi, de continuer le développement de la voix, chanter, performer avec instruments. Là, en ce moment, je fais beaucoup de percussions et de xylophones. Malheureusement, à cause de la COVID, on ne peut pas faire de la flûte à bec, mais en temps normal, oui, et ça commence à partir de cycle 2. Et puis, avec cycle 2 et 3, c'est la même chose. Là, on ajoute des niveaux de difficulté qui sont un peu plus challenging pour les élèves, des rythmes plus complexes, lire les notes, des plus gros projets de composition sur instruments, faire du bucket drumming, qui est une de mes spécialités, euh, jouer avec xylophone, faire des présentations orales sur un artiste, musique de film, compositeur, euh, unité de jazz, de rock, you name it, I do it. Et pour terminer, ma plus grande passion en enseignant la musique, c'est de mettre en valeur le travail des élèves par des concerts. C'est ça qui me passionne le plus. Ça permet aux parents de voir ce que nous avons appris en classe, que ça prend du temps à monter et préparer quelque chose de vraiment extraordinaire. Ça prouve que n'importe qui peut avoir du succès en musique avec de la pratique et du travail d'équipe. Puis ils ont vraiment du gros succès, les élèves, quand ils performent. Puis pour moi, la musique est, est essentielle et c'est ce qui me rend le plus fier, c'est de voir mes élèves performer. Puis Madame Marianne, euh, c'est incroyable, incroyable qu'est-ce que tu fais avec tes élèves, avec nos enfants. Puis, uh, I see it every time I walk by, or I hear, I hear the, the passion from yourself and from the students. Uh, we are very, very lucky and fortunate to have you there. Uh, our students love music class. Um, and so uh, I thank you. Thank you very much because uh, our kids, we see their development progress from pre-kindergarten all the way to grade six. Um, and to parents uh, or families, actually, if they watched our uh, video too of uh, the music concert you did in December, which was incredible as well. Uh, and we have families uh, who always appreciate it and are grateful, just like merci. I am. So merci beaucoup, Madame Marianne. And uh, we look forward to having new kids join next year to be part of your program. Yay. Merci beaucoup, Madame Marianne. Go enjoy your Oscar. Merci. <laughs> so now we're going to talk a bit about our French program. Uh, as you all probably know, Pierre Elliott Trudeau is a bilingual school. And research shows that bilingualism has many cognitive benefits that go beyond those of language acquisition, such as heightened mental flexibility, creative thinking skills, enhanced metalinguistic awareness, as well as greater communicative sensitivity. 
At our school, the bilingual program offers 50% English instruction, 50% French instruction. What this means is that one day is French, they do one day, another day English, and they switch that. And one of the days it's half half. So fortunately with us, we have tonight two of our French teachers. On a Madame Lisandre, qui est enseignante de deuxième année, et on a Madame Lucille, enseignante en quatrième année. Bonjour Madame Lisandre, bonjour Madame Lucille. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va bien? Oui. Oui, excellent. très bien, merci. Parfait. Alors, Madame Lise, euh, oui. comment le français est-il promu et encouragé au cycle 1 à PET? Alors, euh, ben, bonjour tout le monde. Et <rire> euh, premièrement, les matières enseignées en français euh, à pierre Trudeau, cycle 1, c'est effectivement le français. Mais on a aussi les mathématiques, l'art dramatique et la musique. On a la chance d'avoir à l'école une population euh, linguistique quand même assez diverse. Donc, on a une école anglophone, mais on a aussi des, des élèves allophones, des élèves, beaucoup d'élèves qui sont très euh, confortables bilingues, français-anglais, et des élèves francophones. Donc, ce mélange d'élèves, justement, encourage la communication orale en français entre les pairs et permet des situations de communication authentiques. Je trouve ça très merveilleux parce que si je me promène dans les, classes, dans les corridors, je veux dire, euh, je peux entendre les élèves, pas juste les miens, les autres aussi, qui communiquent entre eux et c'est très mélangé, moitié-moitié français-anglais. Donc, spontanément, on a beaucoup de groupes d'élèves qui vont parler en français entre eux dans des situations informelles. Justement parce qu'on a une clientèle qui est mixte, nous utilisons un matériel euh, mixte, justement, un matériel qui euh, est un mélange de, euh, euh, excusez-moi, de matériel qui cible les élèves d'apprentissage en langue seconde en français et du matériel qui cible les élèves pour l'apprentissage de la langue maternelle. Avoir utilisé, à utiliser ces deux types de matériel nous permet de rejoindre euh, les élèves où ils sont rendus dans leur apprentissage et les différents besoins de chacun. Finalement, euh, à l'intérieur de la salle de classe, euh, nous encourageons l'acquisition du français en offrant aux élèves des activités d'apprentissage variées et euh, en mettant vraiment l'emphase sur des activités de communication orale au cycle 1 qui leur permet de se sentir plus à l'aise pour parler en français, qui est la base pour parler avant de lire et d'écrire. Et euh, ça leur euh, permet de... Euh, de augmenter leur vocabulaire euh, et leur connaissance de base. Nous faisons beaucoup d'apprentissage en utilisant les centres qui leur permettent de travailler en équipe et, et euh, compléter différents projets au cours de l'année scolaire. Superbe! Alors, comme, comme les autres programmes, on, on fait beaucoup à, à Pure L.A. Trudeau. <rire> Puis, euh, je vais expliquer un peu en anglais pour les, les parents qui, qui, qui regardent aujourd'hui. Um, comme uh, Madame Lise André uh, dit, like Miss uh, Madame Lise uh, André said, uh, we have students, you know, different levels of French, uh, but they, uh, our teachers are incredible that they can work at the levels that the kids are at and bring them to the level that we want to achieve uh, in order to be our bilingual program. Uh, just to let you know, we have some students who started with us at the beginning of the year, uh, did not speak a word of French. And we have a tutor who's working with the kids, working with iPads. Uh, at home, there's uh, apps that are helping to support this learning. Uh, and now the child speaks French, reads French. Uh, and it's a, it's a great and beautiful um, accomplishment uh, for us to see, as well as for the child's confidence to also grow. Uh, and that's, of course, thanks to our fantastic staff. So, merci beaucoup, Madame Lise André. Puis maintenant, Madame Lucille, uh, vous avez enseigné plusieurs niveaux à PET. Comment le niveau de français évolue-t-il ensuite à PET dans les cycles supérieurs? Peut-on dire que les élèves sont bilingues en sortant de PET? Mais justement, je... donc, bonjour tout le monde. <rire> euh, donc, j'allais citer l'exemple. On a eu des élèves, déjà eu des élèves qui arrivaient du Japon et parlaient ni français ni anglais. Donc, c'est sûr que c'est un gros challenge, mais à la fin, ils sont sortis de PET en parlant les deux langues et notamment le français, qui n'est quand même pas une langue facile souvent. Ils sont sortis en parlant le français, ils étaient bilingues, euh, et ça c'est vraiment magique. On a plusieurs ex autres exemples de familles qui arrivaient d'Australie aussi. Donc euh, après, ce qui... je vais rebondir sur ce que Madame Lise a dit, c'est que les matières qui sont enseignées ensuite au cycle 2 et 3, donc les quatre dernières années du primaire, ça va un petit peu changer. Euh, donc il va toujours y avoir le français, il y aura l'histoire géo, l'art euh, plastique, 
ECR, qui est éthique et culture religieuse, puis toujours musique. Et donc, ça va permettre plus de contacts et donc d'apprendre plus de vocabulaire aux élèves aussi. À Villa, l'histoire géo, notamment l'histoire du Québec, du Canada, la géographie, ça apporte beaucoup de vocabulaire. Et puis, ce n'est pas parce qu'on est un programme bilingue que nos exigences vont baisser. Comme l'a dit Madame Lise, on utilise... On, fait un, on adapte notre matériel à, aux élèves qu'on a, mais la base est quand même là. On va toujours apprendre la grammaire, parce que souvent, c'est quelque chose que les parents veulent savoir, en français notamment. On va toujours apprendre la grammaire, la conjugaison, le vocabulaire, la syntaxe. Ils apprennent à lire et à écrire comme n'importe quel enfant au Québec euh, en français. Donc, ils vont avoir les mêmes bases là-dessus. Euh, L'avantage qu'on a dit, comme Messa Brez l'a dit, c'est qu'à PIT, on est des enseignants, on est tous des locuteurs natifs francophones, donc c'est quand même un plus. Euh, pour avoir fait plusieurs écoles, je trouve que le niveau de français à PIT est beaucoup plus élevé que dans certaines écoles de, le, de Montréal, on va dire. Puis c'est le milieu aussi qui aide à ça. Et puis l'évolution du français à travers les cycles, c'est aussi grâce au projet. C'est que, par exemple, nous, en quatrième année, cette année, on lit un roman. Donc, chaque année, il va y avoir des romans. Puis, on fait un projet par rapport à ça. Et puis, ensuite, en cinquième année, ils vont aussi faire des projets. Puis, en sixième année, vous verrez, M. Patrick vous parlera de la robotique. Puis là, c'est sûr qu'en français, ça amène beaucoup de plus de complexité, de vocabulaire. Et donc, en sortant de PIT, je trouve que les élèves, oui, peuvent être bilingues. On a même des anciens élèves qui sont allés au secondaire en français ensuite, uniquement francophone. Donc, ça montre que le programme a quand même une force. C'est ça. Parfait. Merci beaucoup, Madame Lucille. So, I, I know we have a, a question here um, which, uh, well, uh, regarding the French program. If it's the same as the French schools or not, will the student pass ministry exams for French as a second language? So, uh, because we all have requirements by the, the Quebec uh, education, um, so we do have requirements. Our requirements are for French as a second language. Um, and so we have those requirements. So, in grade six, the kids do have a uh, grade four, sorry, and grade six. Uh, students do write an exam. Madame Lucille, je sais que tu as, as déjà enseigné six années, puis maintenant quatre années. Je ne sais pas si tu veux répondre à cette question aussi. Ben, c'est ça. C'est sûr que on a, par rapport au, c'est pas exactement le programme de français parce qu'on a la moitié du temps. Mais en termes d'examen, quand on voit euh, ce qui se fait en quatrième année euh, ou en sixième année aussi, le niveau est quand même vraiment. Euh, pas dire élevé parce que c'est pas non plus... Euh... Ben, il est élevé, mais je veux dire, c'est pas inatteignable, je veux pas faire peur non plus. Mais il est, il est tout à fait adéquat euh, pour à sortir bilingue et ou dire, OK, je suis francophone, je peux me débrouiller complètement en français. Parfait. Merci beaucoup. Alors, euh, notre programme de français est incroyable, comme les autres programmes. Alors, merci beaucoup, Madame Lucille, et merci beaucoup, euh, Madame Lisandré. Uh, we're going to show you a, a video of our program, our French program, programme de français. So, please take a look and enjoy. Avec le programme bilingue, les enfants ont la chance d'étudier en anglais et en français. Nous sommes situés au cœur du quartier Rosemont. Par conséquent, le niveau de français à l'école Pierre-Éliott Trudeau est très élevé. Le contenu ressemble beaucoup à un enseignement du français de langue maternelle. On fait des verbes, de l'écriture et beaucoup de textes. Euh, ben, on fait un jour un jour, anglais et français. Et euh, on fait beaucoup de travail sur la, comme la rédaction, où on lit et on fait comme des mathématiques en anglais, ça aide beaucoup. Et euh, l'escale, l'histoire, c'est en français, j'adore ça en français. J'aime bien utiliser l'enseignement en faisant des projets, mais également en utilisant des méthodes un peu plus traditionnelles. Ainsi, en ayant une bonne base en français, nos élèves ont donc l'opportunité de continuer leur école secondaire en anglais ou bien dans un milieu francophone, ce qui rend notre école très intéressante. Bien, on a des bonnes bases en écriture puis à l'oral ici, à Pierre-Yétreau, en français et en anglais. Ça, c'est important pour le travail dans le futur, si tu veux aller dans un travail angl anglophone. Les écoles seulement dans une euh, langue, tu n'apprends pas de l'autre langue et c'est une pas une opportunité parce que le plus de langues, tu peux tra traverser plein de pays.
All right, so you saw a bit of, again about our French program. Now we're going to go to our resource program. I'm going to have Miss Martha join us, who is one of our resource teachers. How are you, Miss Martha? Hello. I'm doing really well. How are you? Very good. Can't complain. So, uh, Miss mm -hmm. Martha, uh, there's so much to say about resource, um, and we don't want to, to to keep our viewers here too long. But uh, many Im initiatives have been put into place for resource support. Can you please share with everyone examples of the kind of support that we have at PET? Sure, no problem. Uh, we work to accommodate our students with special educational needs, uh, basically by trying to remove the obstacles that might be getting in the way of their learning. Um, so if a student receives a diagnosis, for example, ADHD or a learning difficulty, we will um, put in place uh, what's called an IEP or individual education plan, uh, outlining some strategies and adaptations that might help them like extra time or breaks in the day or visual aids, whatever it is they need to kind of get where they're going. And uh, we set goals and objectives for those students. Um, we have some other initiatives. I could go on and on, but I'll try and keep it short. <laughs> other initiatives, uh, a lunchtime acceleration program. We have tutors. We have volunteers and, uh, working with the students. Some students are entitled to the help of a child care worker, which we mentioned already. We have a professional team, which I think pre-K also outlined um, there to consult with parents and with teachers. And uh, we just, we all work together to provide the students with support they need uh, to achieve the goals that we set. So that's our program. <laughs> that was great. Nice, short and sweet. Okay. <laughs> um, and so basically at, at PT, um, you know, um, we talk, we have a lot of different programs, acceleration, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, um, things that, you know, we try to get our students perhaps who are struggling or even those uh, who are at a higher level to bring them to a higher level. And, uh, um, you know, as much as possible, uh, we have uh, our great teachers there uh, who are there to support. And again, it's very important to work with the families to uh, support the child. And uh, so thank you. Very and much. communicate. We all, lots of right. communication. <laughs> it's true. Communication is key. So, uh, so thank you very much, Miss Martha. Okay, next up, we're going to have our uh, enseignant de science et art dramatique, Madame Lorani. Bonjour tout le monde, bonjour Madame Adair. Bonjour, ça va bien? Ça va très bien. Et vous? Uh, very good, very good. See, this is what we do at PET, a bit of franglais here and there, and, and always smiling. So that's the great thing about it. C'est so, vraiment la première chose à faire, sourire. Bah. Tout, tout le temps. Parfait. Euh, exactement. Alors, Madame Lorani, parlez-nous un peu de notre programme scientifique au PET et comment le programme STEAM améliore leur apprentissage. Le programme de sciences à Pierre et à Trudeau est décheliné sur trois volets. Alors, le premier volet étant l'univers du vivant, on parle de biologie, d'écologie. Le deuxième volet, plus vers l'ordre matériel, c'est-à-dire euh, ce qui ressemble plus à l'ingénierie. Donc, on touche à des notions de physique, de chimie, euh, de mécanique. Et évidemment qu'on essaie d'entrer aussi les technologies là-dedans parce que c'est assez important de nos jours, n'est-ce pas? Et le troisième volet, lui, c'est terre et espace. Alors, euh, dans ce volet, on explore ben, euh, le système solaire, la météorologie, les phases de la Lune, l'environnement, puis évidemment la géologie, géologie aussi. Alors, euh, ce programme plus théorique, il est associé avec notre STEAM. Et vous m'avez posé la question à savoir euh, comment STEAM améliore les apprentissages. Ben, dans ma perspective et mon expérience à pierre, à pierre Elliott Trudeau, euh, le programme STEAM, en fait, c'est le département des petits miracles parce qu'il y a quelque chose qui s'anime quand on entre dans un projet pratique parce qu'on applique la théorie sur les méthodes en utilisant des outils, en, en utilisant une pensée qui est plus... Euh, euh, qui demande aux enfants de mettre en œuvre ce qu'ils connaissent et qui sont obligés de partager entre les partenaires. Alors, il y a vraiment beaucoup d'effervescence de, dans ce projet euh, STEAM associé au programme qui est présenté à pierre et de la science. Merci, Mme Lorani. Euh, puis, vous avez l'avantage d'enseigner à tous les élèves de la troisième année à la sixième année en sciences. 
Que remarquez-vous chez les étudiants à mesure qu'ils grandissent d'une année à l'autre? Bien, en fait, c'est ça, c'est la progression. Madame Marianne l'a mentionné plus tôt. Euh, ce programme de sciences échelonne, comme le programme de musique, mais sur quatre ans, au lieu de toute la période euh, élémentaire. Alors, euh, sur quatre ans, on a le temps de pratiquer non seulement des, des notions, d'étudier des notions théoriques, mais aussi de développer des relations avec les enfants. Alors, le tissu social est quand même assez intéressant. Alors, la classe de sciences devient un refuge euh, dans lequel les enfants ben, se permettent d'être eux-mêmes. Et ça nous donne aussi l'opportunité de les voir sur une plus grande période qui nous permet de les préparer pour l'école secondaire. Parfait. Puis, cette année, on a Art Dramatique. C'est la première année qu'on a ce programme-là, ce cours-là ici. Euh, quels sont les buts du cours d'Art Dramatique? Bien, d'abord et avant tout, on veut s'amuser. Parce que ce programme est offert aux enfants de première et de deuxième année. Du moins, on est en exploration et euh, ça fonctionne plutôt bien. Parce que l'objectif est de jeter les bases de l'expression orale chez nos jeunes. Alors que ce soit en français ou en anglais, euh, on emmène les jeunes à, dans des activités qui demandent d'entrer dans la peau des personnages, d'exprimer des émotions, d'écrire des scénarios. Et puis, euh, cette période d'art dramatique, elle est offerte une fois par semaine. Et euh, ça devient un autre refuge là, où on peut inventer, interpréter, écrire. Alors, voilà. On espère que l'année prochaine, ça continue aussi bien parce que les résultats sont assez prometteurs. C'est vrai, c'est vrai. So, um, basically, uh, Madame Lorraine is uh, almost the second luckiest person in the school because she gets to teach the students from grade one to grade six. So, grade one and grade two, they're doing art dramatique. Puis, uh, troisième au sixième, uh, au sixième c'est uh, science. Oh, yes. Alors, t'es chanceuse. Puis, uh, merci beaucoup, Madame Lorraine. Uh, art, uh, art dramatique is my other class. I like to go there because I can be a clown, I can be fun, I can joke around. Um, and je peux pas pratiquer mon français. Uh, so it's fantastic. And so it's always fun to be in your class. So merci beaucoup, Madame. Et vous êtes toujours la bienvenue. Allez, portez-vous bien. Merci. So we're going to actually watch uh, our STEAM program video. Take a look. Enjoy. Pierre Trudeau uh, is lucky enough to have a makerspace. Uh, this is an area for cross-curricular learning where students can come in and work on different projects. We're trying to focus on the four C's. So creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. And we try to do that by integrating STEAM projects into our school year. So all students have to have at least a minimum of one STEAM project a year. And in this STEAM project, oftentimes they have to work to solve a problem, they have to integrate new tech, and it varies yearly. And sometimes they will be using robots, sometimes they will just be using a green screen because you might not see it, but on the right hand side of me is a huge green wall. Um, in grade six, what uh, STEAM looks like is robotics and it's integrated in French. So STEAM is not something that's apart from everything else, it's something that we try to integrate into all that we learn. Also in grade six in English, I give my students a genius hour project, which is where they get to choose whatever they would like to learn. And then having the ability of the things in this space allows them to create as much as possible. Um, STEAM is really fun because it doesn't matter what you like. You can like science or art or it doesn't matter. You choose a project that you like and you you do whatever you want with it. Um, but there's still rules like you're able to like make it artsy, but you also have to put other elements. Yeah, you learn how to cooperate with your teammates. You also learn how to use different objects. Well, for me, I like the art part because um, You still learn stuff, but you can make it your own by adding uh, color or stuff like that. And it's also fun working in a team because you get to get other people's ideas and then it can help you get another idea and stuff. Well, um, 
Most of the time we work in teams, so we get to um, build stronger relationships with our friends and um, like work as a team together and it helps you learn like things in life. And then you have, um, sometimes you do robotics in Steam and I learned to program stuff because um, like a long time ago, I was really not good with computers, but now I feel better with them. So that's also good. So that video, Mr. Patrick made that, and that there's Madam uh, Miss Jennifer and, and Mr. Patrick who spoke. Um, this was again was taken last year. Um, there's so many things that are happening in that makerspace and in those classrooms that a video, a short video, a short clip of a minute and bit can't really uh, depict and show you what. Uh, creativity, what uh, learning is taking place. Um, really, it, it's, it's, it's too much to even explain, but we're going to try our best with the following uh, group of people that we have here, uh, the Cycle 3 teachers and some students. So I'm going to introduce our Grade 5 English and Math teacher, Miss Melinda. Hi. Hi, Miss Melinda. How are you? I'm doing how are you? Not too bad. I, I think your sound, if we could just put it a little bit closer, your microphone. Um, okay. How's this? Is this better? Bit better. Bit better. All right. Okay, good. So, Miss Melinda, you have been a teacher for uh, quite a few years. Uh, can I ask how many years? I'm going, this is my 19th year teaching. 19th year. So, obviously, you have seen many students walk through these hallways, come through the doors, and graduate. Um, yes. And so, <laughs> along with many other staff, actually, we have a lot of staff at our school who have been at PET for a very long time, which is incredible. And that just shows you the kind of family and spirit um, exists at our school. Oh, we are definitely a family. We are. We, are. <laughs> we want everyone here to be joining our PET family. So don't forget to register with us. So, um, so all these staff members have helped prepare students for their future. Um, and I'm sure an important question that parents uh, probably have is how does PET prepare their child for high school? Um, oh, okay. So how do we prepare them for high school? So um, before we send them off to high school, basically, we want to make sure that our students in grade five and six, um, we want to make sure that they have a solid understanding of the concepts that that they've been that they've been taught that they learn. And this is what we believe will make for a smooth transition to high school. Um, and we try to do it in, in engaging ways uh, throughout the day. So through different ways of teaching, for example, a, a typical day in math or a typical lesson in math will include some work in centers, uh, the, like we will incorporate the use of technology in our lessons, um, or even something as simple as using manipulatives to help them better understand uh, the concept. Being a STEAM school, um, our students are introduced to technology at a very young age uh, in preschool, really, uh, preschool and pre-K, really. Um, so by the time they reach grade five and in grade six or cycle three, they're able to work with so many programs, be it on the iPad, on their Chromebooks, on laptops. Um, and these are devices that they use daily in grade five and in grade six. Also, we do have a stable team of cycle three teachers at PET. And what we love to see most is to, to see our students become independent learners by the end. And so what we try to do is we, we give them opportunities to attempt independence, um, all the while being there to guide them along the way in case they need any help with that. So it, basically teaching them the independence and, and solidifying their, their, their concepts, that's our main goal. And I have to say, Ms. Melinda, it's my third year here at uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, and uh, you guys do a fantastic job of that. So uh, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, I have to say, because I was a high school teacher before that, uh, before I became an administrator, um, and the technology, um, the way it's integrated into our school with our STEAM pro um, program uh, is one like no other. Our kids are prepared so well um, that, you know, sometimes they go to a high school and they're so much more advanced than what the school is even offering. And that's absolutely. Yeah, and, that, and that's incredible. because And like you said, on a daily basis, the kids are using technology. And I love that. When I go in to say good morning, a lot of times the kids are so distracted doing their work. I shouldn't say distracted. They're engaged <laughs> doing their work that I can't even distract them. Um, and that says a lot as well. 
So and when we're learning something new or trying on a new program, for example, and they don't know how to do it, I mean, um, it, it's incredible to see them helping each other and working together just to help them figure out um, how the new program works. And that's what our STEAM program is all about. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's different challenges. How do we find solutions to it? Um, and uh, you're like, taking risks. Th that's right. Right. And uh, and so I have to say cycle three teachers, cycle two, all our teachers at our school uh, are showing that uh, to the kids, especially like you said, technology from pre-kindergarten when they work on the B-Bot to when they do their robotics competition when they're in grade six. Absolutely. So, uh, fantastic. Um, so I thank you, Miss Melinda. Um, you. It has been a great pleasure. And uh, now we're going to actually look at some students uh, in uh, cycle three. So I'm going to introduce to you two fabulous students. We have grade five student Brooklyn and grade six student Julian. Hi, Julian. Hi, Brooklyn. How are you? Good. Hey. Hey. I'm fantastic. Now that you're here, I told you both that you're the superstars and the highlight of the evening. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, we'll start off first with Brooklyn, grade five student. Miss Jennifer in the video before spoke about Genius Hour. So can you tell us a bit about Genius Hour from your point of view? So Genius Hour is 80% of the time that you're in school, you're going to be working like normal but 20% of the time you're gonna be working on your own project. Your project can be anything. Work on your ping pong skills, learn a new language. It can be literally anything. Can it be how to be a principal? Yes, it can. Perfect, should I take that? Should I do that or I'm okay? I think you're fine. Perfect, thank you, Brooklyn. Fantastic, and so Genius Hour, this is something that you enjoy? Yes. Perfect, because you can be creative, imagine, and do whatever it is that you like. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Great. Julian, um, tell me, why is PET different than other schools? Well, PET is different from other schools because we accept the students, no matter their religion or culture, and we have a lot of child care workers, which help the students with disabilities, and they also help everybody in the class. Oh, and also we have a school choir. Fantastic, thank you, Julian. Okay, now, uh, Brooklyn, si vous deviez convaincre d'autres parents d'envoyer leur enfant au PET, que diriez-vous? Dans la vue de mes parents, ça serait l'anti-intimidation qui compte vraiment et l'école bilingue. Dans ma vue à moi, j'aime bien que les profs Sont, sont sportifs, ils vont, ils vont aider dans n'importe quelle circonstance. Perfect, good. I, I like these answers. Amazing. You guys are like superstars. So, okay, good. Um, grade six, Julian, almost ready to, for high school. So yeah. how, in your opinion, how does PET prepare students, our students for high school? PT prepares students for high school by having motivating teachers, which push the kids to do their best in everything. We also do a lot of STEAM projects, so by the time your kids will be in high school, they will be used to STEAM. PT also invites high schools to come and present their programs and their school that open up more options for our students. Thank you, Julian. Okay, so we're talking about different projects and whatnot. Um, Brooklyn, what is one favorite project that you have done or currently perhaps doing right now at our school? Well, in Miss Jennifer's class, English class, we are doing writer's notebook where every month you have four entries to do. And every entry you have to draw a little stickman that goes, that follows you around all year. An example for one of my entries would be my dream car. And I drew a car that I would love to have. And then I'd have my little stickman sitting on my page saying, oh, five years till you can drive a car. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Very creative. I, I think I would be, write more if I had a, a notebook journal like that. I like that. Good project. Um, Julian. Si vous deviez donner un message aux parents concernant le PT, quel serait-il? Je voudrais dire que j'ai trouvé l'atmosphère de PT très amicale et nos professeurs sont dévoués 
encourageant, ce qui facilite l'apprentissage. Amazing! So, I have to say, Julian, I'm going to miss you next year. Maybe, how about, how about, I, how about you fail? No? No, okay. I tried, I tried. Well, we have Brooklyn for another year, so that's awesome. Okay, um, I truly appreciate you taking the time to represent our school and our students. You're also wearing fabulous t-shirts. Um, this t-shirt was one of our shirts from last year, right? Our PET Wolfpack. Amazing. Good job, team. Uh, Julian, do you want to introduce our next special guest? Okay. Voici Monsieur Patrick, notre professeur de français et de robotique. Thank you very much. Monsieur Patrick, c'est beau. Ça... Hey, bonjour tout le monde. Ça va bien? Ça va très bien. Et vous? Ben oui, ça va super bien. Mais là, je n'ai pas apporté de, de statut, euh, de statuette des Oscars. Mais j'ai quelque chose qui pourrait ressembler à ça, peut-être. Hello, I am C3PO, Human Cyborg Relations. Alors, c'est tout ce que c'est dire. C'est incroyable, C3PO. Fantastique, Monsieur Patrick. Alors, Monsieur Patrick, um, est-ce que tu peux me parler un peu de, du club de robotique? Oui, ben, ben oui, je suis là pour ça. Puis, euh, je suis vraiment excité de vous parler du, du, euh, du, du club de robotique. Parce que le club de robotique euh, à pierre elliott Trudeau, c'est quelque chose de grand, c'est quelque chose de gros. Euh, c'est quelque chose qui a commencé euh, en 2011. Euh, nous sommes d'ailleurs une école bien établie dans le milieu. Nous avons rapporté plusieurs prix depuis le début du programme. Euh, nous avons également participé à deux compétitions internationales, dont une à Montréal et une autre à Nagoya, au Japon, euh, pas, plus, pas, pas plus loin que 2017. Alors, c'est quoi la robotique? La robotique, c'est euh, un projet où les, les élèves vont construire un robot muni d'un ou plusieurs moteurs. Ensuite, avec l'aide de logiciels, ils vont programmer le robot en faisant bouger les moteurs dans le temps ou en fonction d'un capteur. Comme par exemple, si le robot utilise un capteur de couleur, il va bouger ou s'arrêter lorsqu'il voit une ligne blanche tracée euh, au sol, par exemple. Comme on voit à l'écran, le robot devait pousser les objets à l'extérieur du cercle, mais il devait rester à l'intérieur. À chaque année, nous participons au moins à une compétition. Dans les compétitions, nous avons un défi à relever et l'équipe qui ramasse le plus de points remporte une médaille. Dans ce cas-ci, il fallait que le robot monte trois marches. L'équipe qui réussissait l'exploit le plus rapidement possible remportait le défi. L'équipe que l'on voit en ce moment a remporté la médaille d'argent de la compétition l'année passée, Robot Junior. En plus des défis proposés par la compétition, nous avons deux projets que nous poursuivons d'année en année. C'est-à-dire la construction de deux robots légendaires, C-3PO et son grand ami R2-D2. Ça comprend d'abord l'impression des pièces avec l'imprimante 3D, l'assemblage des pièces, le polissage, l'étape de la peinture et quand tout est terminé, on fait la programmation. Pour C-3PO, nous venons de terminer la tête et nous allons construire maintenant les bras que nous allons tenter d'animer avec des moteurs. Nous allons insérer les moteurs à l'intérieur du robot. Pour R2-D2, nous travaillons présentement sur les lumières au niveau de la tête et de la construction des jambes. Nous allons ensuite tenter d'actionner les moteurs de la tête et des pieds pour qu'ils puissent se déplacer. La robotique, c'est pour qui? C'est pour d'abord, il y a deux groupes. D'abord, en parascolaire, c'est un programme enrichi qui est offert à quelques élèves qui démontrent une certaine autonomie à partir de la quatrième année. D'abord, ces élèves sont recommandés par leurs enseignants titulaires. Ensuite, je décide si le programme leur convient et je les réinvite l'année suivante. Le programme est aussi offert à tous les élèves de sixième année, lorsqu'il n'y a pas de COVID, <rire> évidemment. Dans le cadre de ma classe de français, j'utilise la robotique pour évaluer l'oral. C'est-à-dire que les élèves doivent travailler en équipe pour construire programmer et relever des défis en dialoguant entre eux en français. La pratique de leur français oral sera nécessaire puisque lors des compétitions, ils doivent s'adresser aux juges en français pour présenter leur robot et leur expliquer leur programme, ce qui leur donnera des points d'abord pour la compétition et ensuite pour leur bulletin qui sera à la fin de l'année. Merci beaucoup, M. Patrick. Bien, bienvenue. Alors aussi, je voulais profiter de l'occasion pour annoncer aux gens qui nous écoutent que les élèves sont vraiment en plein projet. Nous, allons, nous sommes en préparation pour la prochaine compétition qui aura lieu autour du 11 mars prochain. Alors, inutile de vous dire qu'ils sont vraiment prêts 
et vraiment déterminé à remporter d'autres prix. Alors, ça veut dire que la trophée d'Oscar laisse faire, il va avoir des médailles puis des trophées de robotique. Bien, c'est ça. Des Oscars, des médailles puis des robots en or. Rien de Parfait. Moins. Puis, je pense qu'on va dire que toi, tu es Mr. George Lucas maintenant aussi, non? Bien, pour la ça, c'est George Lucas, mais ça va dépendre des prochains projets. Je pourrais me transformer en Steven Spielberg ou ça va dépendre aussi des projets que les enfants vont décider de faire. Ah, je suis excité. N'importe quoi, quelque chose peut arriver dans les prochaines semaines. Ben oui. Un suspense. Parfait, parfait, j'aime ça. Excellent. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Patrick. So now we're going to talk a little bit about daycare. Um, the, our daycare program, it's a base program by the English Montreal School Board. It's a bridge between the classroom and home, which is a wonderful transition for both students and parents alike. Through the different uh, programs offered, students learn life skills that they may not have had the chance to learn in class or even at home. Take a look at our PET daycare video. Hi, my name is Mara Filippone, a technician at Piano Luchuro School. Here at Piano Luchuro Daycare, we do lots of fun activities. Example like arts and crafts, sewing, baking, science, and with a variety of uh, sports activities. Our school is known for the STEAM program, which is extended into our daycare. Children get to build talk, and also talk about their projects. We focus on building children's self-esteem by using different activities through uh, outdoor play, physical activities, green club, and many other interesting uh, fun activities. All right, so we're going to have our daycare technician, Miss Mara, with us tonight. Hi, Miss Mara, how are you? Oh, you're on mute, Miss Mara. Good evening, everyone. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So, Miss Mara, just to give a little bit of information about daycare, uh, if you can tell the parents about the timings at our school for when daycare is offered. We offer three blocks, an AM, AM block, which is from 7 to 7.25, lunch for pre-K, it's 11.02 to 12.20, and for, for grade, uh, grades 1 to 6, uh, from 11.20 to 12.20, and 2.20 till 6, till 6 o'clock. Perfect. So if parents want to have the daycare service, it's there for them in the morning and after school and lunch hour, our daycare educators take care of our students. Yes. Perfect. Uh, our meals, uh, if you want to order hot meals, our catering service is Le Doral um, and uh, parents can order their meals online, uh, pick up the meals. Le Doral gives out their monthly menus and parents can choose that. Our daycare uh, staff uh, then distributes it to the students the on the day of lunch. Perfect. Uh, so, Ms. Mara, uh, on our pet days, um, can you just let us know a bit of what type of field trips and activities are organized for our families? Yes, on pet days, we have uh, in-house activities and we have uh, outings that we usually do. We go apple picking, we go to the biodome. Uh, we also went to Montevilla uh, tubing. We went to Old Montreal. We had a tour of uh, the AML boat and we also took the children on the uh, the children really, really enjoy it. They love to go out. They love to see different things that we have in Montreal. They get to go to places that they don't usually go with their parents. Um, In-house, we have um, professionals that do come in like dynamics, sports ball. They do a lot of gym activities. Um, we have, I mean, arts and crafts. Uh, the kids really, really enjoy coming to daycare. They, like I said, they do really fun activities. And we saw that in the video. So uh, it's 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 great. And we are grateful for having daycare at our school. Uh, a lot of parents right now are using it. How many students do we currently have using our daycare program? Well, I have about 180 regulars and about 44 sporadic. Perfect. So uh, that speaks volumes as well. And, uh, and so regulars are students who are there more often. They're three times or more. Yes, exactly. Okay, and sporadic, it could be just a few times. Once a week, twice a week. 
Perfect. Yeah. And so that's that's the options that we have for daycare at our school. Obviously, uh, if you'd like to have more information, you just can call us um, and we can have you speak with Miss Mara or we can answer the questions for you. So thank you, thank you so much, Miss Mara, for being here tonight. We truly appreciate it. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So now we have a parent member here. Um, we have Mr. Daniel Tatone, who is uh, a parent commissioner, as well as our chairperson on our governing board. Good evening, Daniel. Oh, you're on mute. Technology at its best. And I'm supposed to be the techie guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. See, learning, <laughs> learning through mistakes is the way we like it. So that's, that's the best way to learn. How are you doing tonight? Everything is great. Thank you. Look, this is looking really great. I've been good. watching all evening and uh, really Perfect. happy to be here. Good, good. So um, obviously you are a parent that is engaged in your child's success. That's why you're part of governing board. That's why you are a parent commissioner. Um, and so obviously the importance mm -hmm. of having that communication and liaison with the school is important to you. Absolutely. I think one of the best things uh, we as parents can do for our children is to be involved, uh, whether it's through the uh, parent participation organization or uh, through governing board, um, your decisions count, your voice counts as a parent. And that's what we're there for. Yeah. So, uh, and it's important. And we want to make sure that parents are engaged. And at PET, we're very fortunate to have a lot of parents who partake in grad committee, parents, uh, participation organization, uh, and governing board. So this is incredible. So thank you again for being here. So now, Daniel, as a parent, what do you feel is the strongest aspect of our school? Sure. So I, I really think that... Um, uh, the administration and the teachers uh, have done an incredible job, especially during the last couple of years when we've been dealing with COVID, how, how they've adapted, how they've implemented a structure, how the kids have, have worked together to conform with that has been absolutely amazing. I'm really, really proud of, of what's going on at uh, PET. Um, what caught my eye right away, uh, the, um, the STEAM program. Uh, you saw Marianne talk about it. You saw uh, Madame Lacroix talk about it. And uh, with the robotics uh, integration, I when I came by to, to see the school, that absolutely caught my eye. And the maker space, a space where uh, children and, and students can um, can work on a project and, and try something and learn from their mistakes and, 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 and grow from that. Absolutely amazing programs that we have at uh, PET. My, my, the biggest uh, advantage for me as, as a parent personally has been the special needs programs at PET. There's a, uh, a special needs program called SEEDS, the Strengthening Education and Emotional Development System. And it has been an absolute, uh, I would say a miracle in terms of how it has really helped my son um, uh, integrate and uh, deal with learning difficulties. The teachers are incredible. The, the technicians and resources uh, at uh, PET have been absolutely amazing. So it's been an amazing journey and I really appreciate um, all the, the work and the help that's been done from uh, PET for that. Thank you, thank you, Daniel. Um, and it's been a pleasure having your son at our school. So he's uh, he's grown a lot in the past few years that he's been with us and uh, we look forward to seeing him grow even more in the remaining years. PT. Uh, now, Daniel, what advice can you give new parents who are trying to select a school for their child? Absolutely. So we often think that, uh, you know, location, location, just like a house, location, location, location. Um, but that is important. I, I don't want to downplay that. But however, I truly believe like um, uh, a parent should be looking for programs that their child's are interested in and programs that uh, provide opportunities for success. And, and what do we have here at PT and, and, and what are those advantages and assets? Um, the bilingual program at PET is a huge asset. We've seen even tonight that the, the level of bilingualism coming out from PET has been absolutely amazing. Uh, kids are uh, able to integrate into society so much better here in Montreal and in Quebec. Um, the special, if you're looking for a special needs program, there are really amazing programs here at PET. Um, uh, looking for programs that your child might be interested in. My son is su super into science, super into uh, play, working with his hands and, 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 and working on a project. The STEAM program, the Makerspace, these are amazing programs at PET, and I'm so proud to be part of that, that community. 
Thank you so much, Daniel. And uh, I know that I, you drive in your child. And so, uh, yeah, location, it, it does matter. But uh, I think, you know, the school and the child, uh, finding that connection, the right fit is really important. And uh, it's a tough decision for parents to make. Um, but this is why we try to do, you know, even in this kind of pandemic situation environment that we're living in, to give some kind of opportunity for parents to see what we have to uh, offer them. Uh, and for them to, for parents to have the opportunity to ask us questions, should they have. So I thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. Um, uh, be well, and uh, we will see you soon. Excellent. Have a nice one. Thanks, you too. So um, obviously, we're coming to the end of our uh, virtual open house. There are so many things uh, that we have left to say. Many of you are probably wondering about extracurricular activities. Uh, this year, due to the pandemic, we haven't had many after school. Uh, but usually, we have uh, theater, we have sports, uh, we have chess club. Um, we also have PELO. So PELO is the uh, program for languages. Uh, this year, we actually have, and it, it's going to start up hopefully soon, uh, start back up. We have Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese. So this is open to students from grade one to grade six, and it's taught after school uh, by grade levels or by depending how many students are registered, depending, uh, we might be grouped by grade level. Uh, but this is something that's really important. We know that um, parents like this opportunity. You do not have to be part of that culture in order to take this. It's free and open to all students from grade one to grade six. Uh, and it's a great, great opportunity. We have over 100 students who are, are taking part in these three languages. So um, that's one of the items. Uh, we're coming to the end of our um, night. I know there are questions about enrollment uh, for K-4, if it's more difficult. Uh, if we don't enroll in K-4, is it harder to have a spot in K-5? So that is a great question. Uh, in K-4, obviously, we have less students than in, in K-5. So if you register in K-4, you're in the school in K-5. K-5, obviously, we're limited to the amount of classrooms that we have and the amount of students that we can take. Um, so I can't really say uh, if it'll be for sure you get in or for sure you cannot or will not. Um, but uh, once you're in the school, you're in the school. We, we will not say bye-bye, you have to leave. Um, so I'm hoping that answers your question. Uh, and um, so I just want to thank all of you for taking the time tonight to meet with us. It has been a great pleasure. Uh, I hope you do register at Pierre Elliott Trudeau Elementary School. Uh, this choice will be the best choice for your, your child. Um, our staff and I, we are eager and waiting to meet you and uh, your children and for them to join the PET family. Uh, we have bus service. Uh, we have... Um, we have different uh, activities that go on. Uh, families who want to register for us or with us rather at our school, this week is sibling registration. And next week will be open registration to all other families. So please look at the phone number at the bottom of the screen, call that phone number to book your appointment to register at our school, or you can send us an email and we'll be happy to return it. I wish you all a beautiful evening. Have a good night. Stay well, stay safe, be well, be safe. Um, and take care. Join our PET family. Have a good night.